Hi guys, Shelly Pelly, Annie Parker Confidential. I'm sharing with you today not one of my favorite fall recipes. It is my absolute brand new favorite fall recipe because it's super easy to make. It's good for you. It is low calorie, it is high in fiber, and it is satiating and delicious. We're talking roasted cauliflower steaks. Now there are a million different variations that you can do on it. And today I'm going to make for you the cauliflower steak with a little olive and caper top and on. So come on back and let me show you how easy this is to make. Okay, you guys, this is how easy it is to make. Let me turn this around. I felt like getting, giving you a different viewpoint. All right, so you're just going to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. And I just lined a little baking sheet with some Reynolds wrap. Set that aside. So we're just gonna give it a slight little spray. Set the pan aside. And I'm gonna start just with a large cauliflower head. Uh, I eat this all myself, maybe not one this large, but a medium sized cauliflower head, I really eat all myself. And if you think that eating vegetables for dinner is just like incredibly boring, please at least try this. It's really easy to make. And I will tell you, I have a big appetite and I, when I wanna eat, I wanna eat and I don't want rabbit food. And so what I love about this is that you literally stick it in the oven, let it roast on its own and it's done. So I'm being a little more fancy today because I wanted to show you uh, the olive and caper topping on. But honestly, you guys, a lot of times when I make this just for myself, I just cut it, I spray a little olive oil or coconut oil, a little salt and pepper, some oregano and basil, and I stick it in the oven 40 minutes and I'm done. So it takes about 40 minutes to roast, but it's not working time. So I can go up and I can take a shower, I can get some stuff done, and then my dinner's ready. It is filling, it is hot and hearty, so it's really great for winter, and I think that you will like it. Okay, so you know I'm not a chef. <laughs> I'm a home chef, so this is how I kill my cauliflower. I'm sure the Food Network is gonna come calling at any second now. All right, so you're just gonna peel off the bottom. We'll use that for our garbage bowl. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice these into steaks. So the ends will fall off into little florets. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, or the, okay, or the cauliflower crumbles. Depending on how large your cauliflower is, you'll get what, two to three steaks. Now I cut these in about inch and a half slices, and this is what it looks like, a steak. You're just going to place it on your baking sheet. So I'm just going to do two of these today since I think that's what I'll have for dinner tonight. This recipe, I have to tell you, is an inspiration from the roasted cauliflower steak that they serve at Rancho Valencia, which is, um, it's actually a world famous spa, but it's here in San Diego and my husband and I are members. So we go up there for a nice dinner every once in a while. So here I've got my cauliflower steaks. I'm just gonna give a light dusting of olive oil or sometimes coconut oil as well. I'm just gonna give it a little shot of salt and pepper because you always want to season, otherwise it's not going to taste good. Do that side, a little pepper. Now you guys, um, you, you can find a million different recipes for roasted cauliflower because it's so versatile. And some recipes will have you putting the cauliflower in boiling water and softening it first. But honestly, I just think that's a big old waste of time. So if you're short on time and you don't want to spend 40 minutes roasting it, yes, that's a good option to make it uh, cook quicker, I guess. But really to me, it's just dirtying another pan that you really don't need to dirty. I personally would rather chop it like this, put a little salt and pepper, stick it in the oven and let the oven do the work while I'm going around doing other things. So just a little salt and pepper. I've already preheated my oven to 425 degrees. Done. I'm gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna let it roast for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, now let's make our tapenade. Okay, so this is how easy it is to make a tapenade. Now, again, you can make this in the food processor, and I think if you find a lot of the recipes for a tapenade, it does have you putting it in the food processor. I just like making things easy. I, if, 
If I don't see a reason for it, I don't do it. And honestly, I like a little bit more of, um, I don't like it to be so pureed. I just like sort of a rough chop on my tapenade. I think it gives it more flavors. So all I've done here is I've taken about a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half, just do it to taste of capers. And I love capers because it's just a nice little briny punch and you get a lot of flavor in it for just a little bit of ingredient. I'm just gonna put it in the bowl. I am taking some green pitted olives. You can use any kind you like. Some people like to use the manzanella uh, olives. I don't really care. I think these are delicious. Um, these are my dad's martini olives. <laughs> I'm sure he won't care if I'm using them. So I'm just going to use maybe half a cup From a rough chop. And again, if you want to use the food processor, you totally can. I just feel that, um, you know, for the little bit that I'm making, I kind of have to think about whether or not it's worth dragging it out and cleaning it. And I vote no. <laughs> so I just do a super easy rough chop. Okay, you can hear the dog snoring. Yes, that's you. All right. Everybody in the pool. One clove of garlic, Let's give it a nice little smash, cut the end off. You can also grate the garlic uh, into that if you want to find your chop on the garlic. Grate it on like when those little microplanes, you know, that you might use for lemon zester, except it's thinner. I don't mind chunky garlic because I like it, but do whatever sounds the best to you. It's your dinner. Into the pool, so we've got our capers, olives, a little bit of garlic. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper because I'm a spicy kind of gal. I'm gonna put a little bit of cilantro. You can also use parsley or you don't have to use anything. And you guys, this cauliflower is so good. Like literally, you can put anything on it, any kind of a spice that you like. Some people use a little salt and pepper, a little garlic and onion powder, dried oregano, whatever you like. The bottom line is it's so basic and so easy, but it is delicious and it is healthy. It is so filling and it feels hearty and satisfying. I never thought that I would just want a cauliflower for dinner. I have an appetite and I like to eat and I'm telling you, this is good. So a little bit of cilantro, maybe that's a couple tablespoons. A little bit of cilantro. I'm gonna add just a little bit of olive oil. Wink. This is maybe a tablespoon total. I'm gonna give it a good mix. Uh, at the, if you like this recipe, make double of the tapenade and just put it in the fridge and it'll keep for a few days. And it's one of those dishes where the longer it sits to a certain degree, the more delicious it gets because the flavors all marinate together and it gets a little more pungent. Another option, if you have pesto in the fridge, pesto on it is delicious as well. All right, so that's all we do. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon juice. This looks like not as much lemon juice as what I had. Oh, <laughs> the wrong one. A little bit of fresh squeezed lemon juice to taste. This is about half of a squeezed lemon, so I think I might just taste it first. Side note on lemon. You know how sometimes you just like don't always have lemon around the house, or you just aren't in the mood to like go through squeezing a lemon? This is a tip from my mom. Let me grab this. Okay, you guys, my mom brings me these. These are um, lemon cubes that my mom goes through and she squeezes like a ton of lemons because she has a, a juice squeezer and she just puts them in ice cube trays. And then, you know, obviously she pops them out and she puts them in a bag and she gives half to my sister and half to me. So that's the beauty of having your parents live so close. And then when you have a recipe like this, bada bing, bada bang, just stick it in the microwave or, you know, if you're going to the gym to work out first, just let it melt. All right, and that's our top and on. I think I need to taste it to make sure it's okay for you guys. Don't you think so? Mm. Those have really punchy flavors. Delicious. You can put it in a food processor if this is too chunky for you. Either way, the flavors are delicious. All right, let's set that aside and let's get on to bar. Okay, and here we go. Roasted cauliflower. They're just nice and fork tender. That's how you know they're done. And now we're gonna do this Play-Doh. Like I said, I'll usually eat probably a whole head of this myself, but you guys, it's warm, it's satiating, it's delicious. Okay, mine fell apart, yours probably won't. And let's see if we can make this food now. Ow, ow. 
Don't try that at home. That was really hot. And now we're just going to put a little bit of our olive tapenade on top. Okay, yours might look prettier at home, but I will tell you that it's delicious. Let's have a bite, shall we? Do we want to get a little bit of that tapenade, that fresh cilantro? Mmm. That's delicious. It's a perfect fall meal. You guys, I highly recommend at least giving it a try. If you end up not liking it, you don't have to eat it again, but I think you'll actually love it. I'll put the recipe down below in the video description for you. And for all things wellness, fitness, style, beauty, and healthy living, subscribe to my channel. Visit me on the blog, anyparkerconfidential.com, and I'll see you on the blog.